Hello folks, this is uh, Jeffrey Fox here. And I'm gonna discuss uh, ML Commons benchmarks. This is work uh, done in the science working group uh, led by me and Tony Hay and Yehan. And Greg has done a lot of work to help us on this project. So this will be a rather short discussion. And then I'm gonna follow it with uh, other modules describing one particular benchmark, the earthquake benchmark. So ML Commons is a um, Quite impressive organization. It's actually used to be called MLPerf, and MLPerf is now a component of ML Commons. It has these uh, 52 companies, and um, which are, whose logos are given here, and it has a whole set of um, working groups, uh, including uh, Science, which is the one. Uh, we're going to be more direct, most directly involved with, but a very similar one, HPC Working Group, which actually does also science benchmarks, but with a focus on the computer, not on the science. The core of MRPerf is training and inference, and also embedded or IoT systems. They also look at power issues, and they also produce data sets. They estimate that around 50 FTEs are involved in this uh, tremendous effort. And um, in the science working group, we've identified around 12 benchmarks. But as you'll see, we're only working on four or five of them at the moment. They have now five releases, releases of the training uh, benchmarks and that version 1.1. And um, we can see the, the goals in the next slide. They have these three uh, complementary goals. Benchmarking, seeing how fast uh, a particular algorithm runs on a particular hardware, or seeing how good a particular algorithm does. We ha they have data sets, because you can't really test an algorithm unless you have a clearly well-defined data set, and everybody uses the same data set. Actually, if you want to compare hardware, they have to also use the same algorithm. <laughs> And then there's best practices. You want to make certain that you disseminate to the world. The best way of doing the is machine, new, novel machine learning algorithms, which uh, as they're so new, there is not quite the same uh, level of agreement as there has been in the past. So here is uh, the effort which uh, Tony Haig and myself originally set up, the Science Research ML Commons Working Group. And <coughs> Science has many similar in the issues to industry. It has data center issues and edge issues and algorithm issues. And they have to produce end-to-end -end systems, not just the machine learning. And um, they also have similarities in types of data sets. There's lots of images in industry and lots of images in science. And also, um, science data has different types of um, algorithm issues associated with simulations. And particle physics experiments produce data which are pretty different from most industry exemplars. You don't get so many quarks and gluons produced uh, in self-driving cars and things like that. So the science working group aims to cover a whole set of domains. So here we just list a rather solid set of domains. Uh, we're hoping to write a book soon, which will uh, give an introduction to this, which will hopefully uh, motivate the next set of uh, benchmarks. Here is the URL. It's a part of the ML Commons uh, website. And we not only want to measure hardware performance, but actually more importantly, we want to measure scientific performance. We want to support science discovery. And that's a benchmark measure is scientific discovery. We want to cover a range of problem classes because science is made up of a whole set of disciplines which uh, have different uh, different types of problems. And as I already mentioned, end-to-end -end is pretty interesting. We want to provide a common environment, and there we'll start. We have a good start from ML Commons, which has an ML Cube software system. We have uh, four initial uh, benchmarks, including uh, one additional one coming from Lawrence Livermore. And we also want to make certain we look at important issues such as the so-called fairness, which is high quality metadata allowing you to find things in this, uh, in this uh, rich set of data. The benchmarks, which are 
measure performance of things are pretty um, complicated data with lots of different um, um, issues involved in them and different things measured. And some of these things are not always recorded in quite the same way for a batch hardware. And there is no quite good uh, way of a, there's no good agreement yet on how to best specify what the computer system is and what the algorithm is. There is no there's no and there's no agreed language. There are plenty of non-agreed languages. Um, you could view, for instance, PyTorch as a non-agreed language to specify um, uh, alg deep learning algorithms with. So as we said, we're going to have the metrics, which include science on performance on science discovery, such as the accuracy achieved in the case of earthquakes. How accurate are you on predicting the occurrence of a future earthquake? We want to do the traditional metrics, time to solution. You have a given accuracy. How long does it take to run on a particular computer? In the case of images, there are things like top one and top five measuring on how near you get to the possible classification. But I say um, earthquakes, the real thing is you want to know what the chance of a big earthquake is in a certain region in the next several years because Big earthquakes is fortunately sufficiently uncommon. You don't really want to predict them in the next two weeks. You really want to predict them in the next uh, few years because they're not going to likely to occur in the next two weeks. And we're trying to use these benchmarks to help stimulate new methods and new approaches to science. We want, like the rest of ML Commons, we want to provide well-defined science data sets. We want to provide so-called reference implementations. We want to specify target metrics, measures of scientific accuracy, and we want to document it all properly. And we want the data to be rich enough that you can experiment with new approaches. So here are the five um, benchmarks we have um, with the first four are, are more or less complete. And the fifth one is uh, being prepared by Lawrence Livermore Lab. You can see the science is pretty different. Climate, material science, medical science, earthquake science, and plasma physics. <coughs> in the case of the climate, there's a segmentation problem, classifying cl uh, pixels and images as clouds. In the case of um, this Oak Ridge STEM DL benchmark, is classifying material structure from their electron diffraction patterns in, uh, in electron microscope measurements. Candle Uno is a database problem. You have a whole set of information about uh, what particular chemical compounds do um, when they are used to treat cancer and uh, act on cancerous, uh, cancerous cells. And we want to be able to use that database to be able to predict whether a new, a new um, Chemical will or will not be likely to have useful drug drug effects, and uh, I should say this type of a this type of a approach is very important for the pharmaceutical industry, which around 10 years ago was reaching a pretty poor performance and uh, not, not 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 quality of work, but they were not getting a very high yield of good drugs out of targets. But now with these types of methods, which Predict ahead of time before you do detailed um, experiments what's likely to work, that their uh, percentage of winning drugs has gone up. Still, we would like, it's not enough drugs, but uh, the, the number of successes, success ratio has, has improved. And the one we have here, which we'll focus on, is from our group here, which is an earthquake um, prediction model, or we should say forecast. So there's a bit tense uh, in, in the earthquake area between the word prediction, forecast, and nowcast. We do nowcast because it's, a, it's a, a reasonably safe thing to say you're doing. Here we have plasma physics, the which is used to uh, in the future of nuclear fusion. And uh, here we're doing something even more um, pretty innovative, that using deep learning to learn the results of simulations so that when you take a whole lot of simulations with different parameters, you don't have to run each of them to solve the differential equations from scratch, the partial differential equations. Rather, you just you just teach a deep learning network to learn the results of those simulations. So it ends up being much faster. 
There here is a document which you can look up to uh, find uh, find the, the specification in detail of these first four benchmarks, which I say are effectively finished. Here is just an example of um, training version 1.0. This is the commercial part of um, ML Commons, and here they have a one, two, three, four, eight different benchmarks. Uh, Four are uh, image based here. One is medical, and uh, uh, one is image classification. There was a natural language processing, there are two benchmarks, speech recognition, uh, uh, and also uh, analysis of Wikipedia data. This uses the famous transformer network, BERT, coming from Google originally. Recommender engine, it comes from uh, Facebook. They produce the um, open source, uh, deep learning based recommender engine. Notice all these benchmarks are deep learning. Uh, as far as I can see, if all places where they've been looked at recently, the best algorithms are no longer classical things like uh, principal component analysis and clustering, they're deep learning based. And the final uh, algorithm is Go, uh, so it's a game playing pro uh, program using reinforcement learning which is pretty pretty tough to, to get to work properly. And here we have uh, just a sample of the measurements. I chose some to show NVIDIA and Google. NVIDIA is a major player in these because they're selling a lot of GPUs because they do so well on these um, deep learning benchmarks. And um, there's a variety of different so so software. You'll find PyTorch, TensorFlow, MXNet, which is the Apache. Equivalent of PyTorch and TensorFlow. Other things, Jax here from Google. <coughs> you see, there are lots of missing um, measurements here. Only a few things are made because it takes a long time to make a measurement. And so uh, we don't have results for all possibilities. Up here, we have a lonely Intel measurement. With, uh, however, it's. Um, <coughs> but it's an Intel. Ch 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 it comes from Dallas and Intel. Uh, Machine with an NVIDIA um, A100, the latest um, GPU, just how many with 40 gigabytes, not the 80 gigabytes, the, these, which is the largest A100. Here you have pretty large um, systems. So here we have 496 A100s. That's a lot of GPUs there. And here we have 3, 4, 5, 6 uh, TPUs. TPU is a Google's equivalent of a GPU, and uh, it has rather similar characteristics and actually relatively similar performance. If you compare these measurements between Google and um, NVIDIA, there are not dramatic differences. Here we have on image classification 0.4 on 2480 GPUs and uh, 0.28 on 2048 TPUs. So it's um, actually on this one that. Uh, TPUs outperform GPUs, but uh, in other cases, I think the GPUs are slightly faster. Anyway, there's a rich amount of information here, even though there's a lot of blank spaces here. Here, um, an even smaller font type is the version 1.1, which was interestingly Google did not participate in, but there's a huge number of NVIDIA here. And um, let me see, and that, that's again up to over 4,000 A100s, and up to um, 2,048 A100s here on a public cloud. I mean, there was a time when public clouds were meant to be full of rather weak computers, mainly doing I/O, because that's what you needed to search the web. You needed to stuff the st stuff the web contents on disk and search that disk. So you didn't really need a very powerful CPU. You needed lots and lots of I/O. But nowadays, public clouds offer, if you pay the right amount of money and choose the right instance, very powerful um, um, high-performance computing systems, including these these uh, impressive GPUs. So this has just come out, the training version 1.1, but it came out last November. Here is another ML Commons uh, site, the HPC. Here is version 0.7, another 1.0 has also come out with additional benchmark. And these have um, uh, <coughs> a 
variety of different systems, including a custom custom processor from Fujitsu, uh, uh, the Knight's nice Landing Xeon Phi processor from Intel. That comes from Lawrence Berkeley Lab, who have that on one of their major systems. Uh, we have um, NVIDIA V100s uh, on the, with IBM um, driving CPUs. So it's uh, again a pretty. Uh, there are these the maximum size is about the same as before 2048, but these are operational um, supercomputers. Some of them from um, Department of Energy, some from NSF, NCSA, and TAC and NSF. Uh, CSCS, that must be Switzerland. Fujitsu was obviously Japan. So it's a, it's a both worldwide and um, and across different agencies. And here is just a comment. Uh, I already mentioned the two applications in the um, science working group. These are also science applications used by the HPC working group. Cosmoflow is looking at uh, predicting uh, cosmological parameters by analyzing the results of uh, cosmological simulations. It's a 3D convolutional neural net. And um, it, you specify the accuracy you have to get, and you try to, uh, you try to see how fast you can run your computer to get it. Here is a, 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 a more large climate simulation data trying to identify extreme weather. Again, using again an image classification algorithm uh, with three classes per pixel, cyclone, cyclone, I'm not quite certain what AR is, and background. You, why don't you, the student find out what AR means here? And uh, it won a prize in um, the so-called Gordon Bell, which is the supercomputers premier competition where the fastest computers get rewarded. And it was, it was, um, this particular DeepCan application was given a prize in 2018. And again, here we have reference implementations and data sets available. Here is a little slide. I mentioned we want to try to um, generate a software environment. Uh, so we're going to have um, some repository, which has the data sets, the metadata, which hopefully has this fair access. It has the model stored. It has the hyperparameters specified and the platform specified. Then you um, have to run this all on the cloud, and uh, you can use MLCube here to um, to fetch the data automatically from the repository. And uh, this in this case here, we're assuming a Jupyter notebook, which is what we use for earthquakes to control the system, but. Other systems will just be run, most actually of the submitted results will run in batch mode uh, just by submitting the job to a queue. Uh, the United Kingdom collaborators led by Tony Hay and Yehan, they have a SIML benchmarking technology, which is competitive to MLQ, but may actually be more powerful. So here's the last slide of uh, this set describing the overall status and what to do for the science working group. Uh, we've already showed the chairs, the five benchmarks. They're all ready except for putting them in the right structure. And we have to decide quite on the uh, division between open and closed. Uh, formally in ML Commons, closed means you completely specify the algorithm. So that's a systems performance benchmark. Open is more important for science because that's the scientific discovery benchmark, because you change the algorithm to get the best answers. Here are some, um, if you look at the slides, you'll be able to click on these links and go to these various places. And um, if you want to join the working group, which is not necessary, of course, but you could be interested here, how to join, anybody can join. And it has some minutes of all our meetings. Every, every meet, We meet every two weeks and produce quite comprehensive uh, minutes. So that's the end of this part of the presentation. Thank you.